Hello, thank you for listening. This is the near-death experience of Martin, and this experience occurred on April 25th, 1975, open quote. I had been in the hospital for 8 to 10 hours before they decided to perform an exploratory procedure on me to see what was causing all the pain. I lost track of time and only determined that weeks afterward, the pain was all-consuming. I do remember that I was in a hallway outside the operating theater lying on a gurney. I was moaning from the pain. A corpsman walked up and said the pain should subside because they gave me a pre-anesthetic. I remember being rolled into the operating theater, the pain lessening. A mask was placed on my face and I was told to breathe deep. The next thing I knew was that I was rising up from my body towards the ceiling. I knew my body and other people were below me, but I kept looking up. I stopped near the ceiling light. It was next to my face and very bright. Next thing I knew, I was outside over a river, but before a slight rise in the land with a small house off to the left, and there was a lady, dark, long hair, a little curl, shoulder length, about my age, who was extremely happy to see me. I was not standing on the ground. She had her hands on both sides of my head and kissed me a couple times. Not sexual, just happy to see me. She hugged me. She didn't speak, but told me that she was very happy to see me again, that she knows I don't remember her, but it was okay because she loved me and I would remember if I came with her. More importantly, I had a decision to make. It was perfectly all right if I wanted to return to my life, and it would be perfectly all right if I went with her. It was up to me. I do remember feeling a sense of almost overwhelming serenity. It was great. I also noticed an old man, white hair, heavy set, with a neutral look on his face. He was waiting for me to decide. He was to my right and down a little bit. There was a wooden door behind him, and he had a bunch of keys on his belt. He didn't look at he, he didn't look me in the eye or communicate with me in any way. I didn't get a feeling if he was good or bad. He was just waiting, very patient. I also knew that if he opened the door, I would not be returning. I don't remember any fear, but I did know he would accomplish whatever my decision would be. The ceiling light was still near my face at that time, and I knew I was still in the hospital operating theater, but I was also up above and outside at the same time with these two people. I remember a sense of calm, a feeling that everything was all right. I did have a decision to make, though. The lady was still reassuring me that I would be happy and everything would fall into place if I went with her, but she would also understand if I stayed. I remember thinking that I wasn't finished yet, that there was something I had to do yet. What that was, I didn't know. But I did know I didn't finish what I was supposed to do. I told them I had to go back. I turned away and felt myself going down, my decision made. The ceiling light was growing dimmer. I was glad to get it out of my face. I remember going back into my body, and as soon as I did, I sat up and a lady placed a hand on my chest, pushing me down and telling me that I had to lie down. The doctor wasn't done yet. I said, okay, and laid down. I heard the other people in the room talking, but I can't remember what they said. I felt a mask being placed over my mouth and nose. I also knew it was a nurse and not the dark-haired lady. I wanted to tell her that I came back, but I don't know if I did or not. End quote. What a great story. I particularly liked the, the uh, description and actions of the lady uh, who was with him or, or kind of showed up that it was perfectly all right if I wanted to return to my life. And when she said uh, she didn't speak, but she told me she was very happy to see me again and that she knows I don't remember her, but it was okay because she loved me and I would remember her if I came with her. Totally interesting. There are some questions here. Um, 
question at the time of your experience was there an associated life-threatening event answer yes volvulus of the small bowel my intestines twisted 180 degrees around a band of adhesions from a previous surgery cutting off the blood supply to the rest of them very painful life-threatening event but not clinical death received the last rites the surgeon told me that if he had to bet on whether or not I'd survive, he wouldn't have bet on me. That the volvulus vul of the small bowel exploratory surgery revealed the small intestines were black from being twisted, cut off a blood supply that was killing me. Did time seem to speed up or slow down? Answer. Time was there, but not important at the moment. I can't really describe it other than to say I knew I was up by the ceiling in the operating room, and I was also outside by a river with two people I didn't know. Question, did you encounter or become aware of any deceased or alive beings? Answer, yes. There were two people, female with dark hair, that was overjoyed to see me. She knew me, but I didn't know her. And an older male with white hair who did not communicate with me, but I knew he was waiting patiently, neutrally, for me to make up my mind to stay or not. Question, did you see an unearthly light? Answer, uncertain. It was the ceiling light right next to my face. It shone into my eyes. Question, did you seem to enter some other unearthly world? Answer, uh, summertime by a river, small house nearby outside, but I knew the operating theater was directly below me. Question, did you suddenly seem to understand everything? Answer, earth is only a part of a living, vibrant everything else. Question. Did you reach a border or limiting physical structure? Answer, I did go through. I also know that if I, yes, I did not cross but came close. I also know that if I did go through the door, I would not be coming back. Answer, did you come to a border or point of no return? Uh, I, returning was entirely up to me. I was reassured that if I stayed, everything would be okay. All right. I didn't need the reassurance. I knew it. I don't know how, but I knew it and felt it question did you have a change in your values and beliefs because of your experience answer yes but i really knew them beforehand it made me realize what was important not to be confused with making a living even though you still have to pay your bills question was the experience difficult to express in words answer yes makes you sound like a nut who perhaps is looking for attention or worse self-importance question are there one or several parts of your experience that are especially meaningful or significant to you answer returning to my life i knew i had a purpose to come back but i also know i left a better place question have you ever shared this experience with others answer yes four separate times polite listening not believed to be honest i don't know what they really thought about my experience end of questions end quotes Thank you for listening. Have a great day.